breakfast. Time for On the Box on the Radio TV Talk with uh, Chris Philpot at stuff.co.nz. Joining us, good morning, Chris. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you very much. And um, today, first up, let's look at um, the coverage of the um, commemorations for the uh, for the Christchurch earthquake and what's going on on TV with respect to that. Yeah, well, t- today, of course, I guess you've mentioned it a few times as the anniversary of, of the Christchurch earthquake. Um, and, and there's plenty going on. I think the biggest event on TV is tonight at 7.30, which is When a City Falls. Um, quite a high-profile documentary about the earthquake, about the um, response to the quake and, and what's happened in the time since. Um, so that should be a pretty decent watch um, for anyone who's interested in that and, and probably quite an emotional piece of viewing for many people as well, I would say. Yeah. Um, and then Prime as well, speaking of documentaries, Prime is um, running a, a shocking reminder, which was their two-part documentary that they ran over the last couple of weeks. It's running again next Tuesday as an encore two-hour special um, at 8.30pm, and that was a really good show as well, um, which kind of just went through the day and what happened um, and, and just showed really sort of, the, as I say, the emotion of the day and, and how we felt watching the quake, um, watching the fallout from it, watching many of the early rescue efforts on TV live uh, through 3 News or one or TV1, whichever one you're watching. I can remember um, tuning into TV3 and just sitting watching it for about four hours straight Yeah. Um, in shock. It, it was one of those events, you know, you think about those really intense TV coverage events like the Christchurch earthquake in this country, or even like uh, 9-11 is another great example, maybe the first big example of the modern 24-hour news cycle uh, era. Um, and and it's it's really, it's emotional to watch, and it's but it's also kind of comforting in a way that the news crews are there, and we know that it is a, it's an event that unites the country in a sense. Well, yeah, it was a way, along with um, social media and and of course uh, just picking up the phone, um, was it was a way of, of finding out exactly what was going on with loved ones as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. So it can be. It does serve. It's got a comforting kind of angle to it as well. It, it serves a public service and that it informs and and keeps us on site. But I, I always think the biggest the biggest thing about those kind of events the biggest advantage of them is that it's a real it's a uniting event we don't get many of them anymore because everyone's downloading or doing things at their own speed recording and watching later or whatever but on an an event like Christchurch the Christchurch earthquake the coverage that day and how involved everybody in the country was reminds us that we're just a big community Mm. we're not we're not a bunch of individuals running around we are one kind of community and that's that's kind of touching in itself, and it's also um, uh, what what makes uh, current uh, or you know broadcast TV still relevant on a day like today as well, doesn't it? That that you know it's not something you go and watch on demand later. The commemorations and mm. and the services you want to be with everyone right now watching this stuff. Yeah, well, that's right. It, it, it's that kind of. Back in the day, everything was like that on TV. Where, you know, you, to watch a show, you had to be sitting in front of the TV and see it. Um, and nowadays, it's it's come down to these important events. And in a way, I kind of feel like that's how it should be. I, I don't know that, um, you know, the latest episode of some sitcom should be the must-watch, everybody sitting in front of the TV mm. event. But I think that an event like this brings everyone together. And as you say, it, it proves that the broadcast television model is still relevant and still serves at least that purpose where it brings us live up to the minute coverage gives us vision that we wouldn't see otherwise um and and really puts us in the on the scene in the place of those people and and helps us commiserate with them um Mm. or or identify with them so now uh something i've noticed on twitter this week is a lot of new zealanders starting to talk about this show called homeland chris (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, it started on Monday last week. Uh, Homeland, of course, is, um, well, I think we've talked about it before, as being the first post-post-9-11 show, whatever that means. Um, it's hmm. it's kind of a complicated complicated idea. But it, it's the it's show about Damien Lewis, who plays Nicholas Brody, as a returned prisoner of war. He's been basically stuck in the Middle East for 10 years as a prisoner of war and he's suddenly been released and has returned back to the USA um, as coming back as the returning hero. And it kind of counterbalances his story with the story of Carrie Matheson, who's a CIA agent who is 
kind of a paranoid schizophrenic almost and believes that he's actually a turned agent he's he's now a terrorist and is planning some devious scheme in the homeland in America uh, that he's going to try and put into place and, and take down someone important. So it's this cat and mouse kind of story that it would, you know, would make most spy novelists jealous, the yeah. kind of intricacy of what's going on. It, it's very interesting. But it, it um, started last week, as I say, but it didn't pick up too many viewers. Um, it played after, after CSI. Hmm. Uh, had 145,000 viewers, which is pretty low, um, really, for a show like that it should have been a lot higher and i think the response on twitter and facebook and and among viewers was pretty negative that it, it not negative about the show but negative that it hadn't rated better mm. um i think that it, you know word of mouth really went into effect then because it certainly um, had been promoted it had been promoted very well by tv3 you know they they they, they had a big lead in um, promoting it they had had the on demand uh, version of it beforehand. There was a lot of um, yeah. I saw banner ads on online as well. Why weren't people tuning in? I've no idea. <laughs> I think you wonder. You know, you wonder about. And I think we've talked about this before as well. The the idea of playing a show for a week online before it debuts on the station. Now it's worked in the past. Um, it worked for Showtime. They did the same thing with Homeland, and then Homeland debuted to huge numbers that they weren't expecting. They did the same in America on the Fox Network with New Girl, which is on TV4. TV4 did the same here in New Zealand, um, where they played the. De- they had the show available for a week online, and then what happened was the debut episode was huge. It, mm. it much higher ratings than they thought. In New Zealand, I don't think it's worked as well. Um, perhaps, I don't know if that's why the ratings were low for the first episode of Homeland. I suspect probably um, it was the lead-in that Homeland had last week, which was CSI at 8.30. No one's interested in CSI, so they turn off. And then Homeland loses that lead-in, huh. where it did a lot better this week. Um, they switched those time slots around. So okay. Homeland played at 8.30, CSI at 9.30. Um and, and it improved by about 60,000 odd viewers. So it, it did a lot better this week. But, you, you know, you wonder about the internet thing, whether that had an effect. My worry with doing that would be, especially in New Zealand, would be that people would go online and go, oh, Homeland's on the internet, I'll watch it there. I wonder if the other episodes are on the internet. And then you've lost that viewer for the entire season. I, it seems like a risky move in this country. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the research says about that. But also, there could be the case that, uh, you know, as you say, Homeland, great show. Um, you know, it's, it's up there perhaps with some, some of the best of, of HBO. Um, the, the potential viewers have already switched off traditional TV. They're already getting their TV from, from yeah. by other means. Um, so so the actual audience that this is really targeted towards has moved on already. That, there's a, that's a possibility, I suppose. That is a possibility. Homeland, as you say, is a quality show. Mm. You know, you would call it a quality TV show where you wouldn't consider something like Fringe or CSI a quality show. Um, and I think a lot of people, as you say, who are looking for those quality shows have moved on from broadcast they don't want to be part of that. They don't want to be involved in advertising mm. or anything like that. They're finding shows their own way because they want to be entertained, whether they find it through downloading, whether they wait till it comes available on DVD. They're doing it their own way. Yeah. And and I think possibly that's hurt Homeland as well, okay. for in, in New Zealand at least. All right, what's coming up on TV this week? Well, we've got a few new shows starting tomorrow night. We've got um, Bored to Death, which is starting on Soho at 8 o'clock. It's kind of a weird film noir comedy sitcom half hour thing um, starring uh, Jason Schwartzman Ted Danson and Zach Galifianakis um, riotously funny in times, quite touching in other moments, it's quite a weird show tonally, um, but it's definitely worth watching, uh, the new series of Glee comes up on Friday at 7.30pm on TV3, I know there'll be plenty of excited people out there uh, Terra Nova starts on Saturday at 7.30pm on TV3 now Terra Nova is the Big budget, uh, going back in time, dinosaurs, oh saving the planet show, uh, brought to you by executive producer Steven Spielberg, whose TV credits don't, they're not really as good as his film credits. No. Um, and that's being kind of generous. Um, and then on Monday night, an interesting one for me, because this is a show that I really liked, was Alphas. Uh, it starts at 10.30 p.m. on Monday on 4. Now, Alphas is a sci-fi show. It's by the Sci-Fi Network in the States, but I think it's one of their best shows they've ever made. It's about everyday people with 
with really weird superpowers. One has super smell and super sight, but can only use one at a time. Um, another guy has the ability to see patterns, and he can, you know, figure out what's going on. Another guy can see, uh, you know, broadcast signals just as visually in the air floating around him. Um, and they kind of work together as a team, and it's a really good watch. Um, an hour, an episode, once a week. Definitely, I think, tune in for that. That would be my pick of the week, actually. Cool, cool. And the Almighty Johnson's as well, starting. Yeah, the Almighty Johnson's next Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m., Series 2. I'm excited. See, right. Series 1's airing in the U.K. at the moment and getting a lot of really good feedback um, and a good good reviews over there. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they step things up for the second season. Excellent. You can find more from Chris over at the On The Box blog. Um, at stuff.co.nz in the technology section. you also find this as a video once more, of course, up at kiwifm.co.nz, the Ready Wemmer Show page link. And Chris Philpot, NZ on Twitter. Cheers, Chris. Cool, thank you. Fagan and the P.